Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay, Atlanta's new standard in payroll. To learn more and get your first month free, go to OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio, and this is going to be an interesting one. I have the president of Dalton Agency, Mr. Bill Kuntz. Welcome. Hey, Lee. Nice to be on with you again. Well, Bill, uh, before we get too far into things, can you tell us, uh, update us a little bit about Dalton Agency? How are you serving folks? Well, it's uh, these are challenging times, right? So, but I would say that overall, our work hasn't changed. Just our location and, and the methods have. You know, we're, we're all working from home in all of our offices. And, uh, you know, that was that was challenging at first, but we're into our third week of it. And I think we've all found our stride. Now, as uh, your business primarily is in public relations and communications and helping companies kind of get the word out uh, about their messages that are important, right? That's that is correct. Yeah, we're a full service uh, communications agency public relations, social media, advertising, digital, uh, content development. We, we really uh, can do whatever our clients need in terms of communication. So and, now was the, to your point, go ahead. Well, so the, a lot of your work I would imagine was not um, face to face with the client necessarily. I mean, some of it, I'm sure you prefer that to be face to face with the, your clients, but a lot of this is done, um, you know, you get a project and you go off and execute. Is that That's tip? correct? But we we try to be face to face with our clients as much as we can, and we have clients all over the country, so that's just not possible in every case. So we were already very well versed at uh, conference calls and uh, Zoom meetings and go to meeting and that kind of thing. Now, was your staff, um, like, were you mostly going to one location to execute and with your team, or were they also remote? Well, having three different, having offices in three different markets uh, and trying to work as one agency across the three markets uh, means that a lot of times teams are remote from each other, but they are going into a physical location. So we have offices in Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida, and Nashville. And, uh, you know, we, we try and mobilize teams across all three of those offices. So, yes, there are times when our teams are working together, but they're not sitting across the table from each other. So now um, from any tips for the business out there that are dealing with this for the first time on how to kind of get your teams all coordinated and on board uh, using remote technology? Well, I, I think more than anything, it's important to be transparent with each other. And, you know, what we have found to work for us is regular communication. So we're meeting as teams uh, very often. In fact, some of our teams are meeting uh, over conference calls daily. We meet as an agency with our almost uh, 100 employees twice a week on, on a Zoom conference call. And it's just really important to stay connected. We also use uh, Slack regularly to stay in contact, and that's worked very well, as you know, as you can imagine. There's so many different tools for for conferencing and joint meetings and things like that that we've we've had the opportunity to test some of them now and find the right ones for us. Um, but you know, what what our teams tried to do from the beginning when we saw this coming, we tried to mobilize our teams. Number one, to be prepared to work at home, but also uh, to begin to analyze each of our clients' businesses and challenges that they're facing today because of the, the COVID crisis. And what we found is, is ways to reach across the agency to use that expertise. And it's really helped us to, to bring all of our, the different disciplines that we have to our clients. So now, how has your role changed uh, during this pandemic? Uh, my role personally hasn't changed all that much. I guess maybe I could say that it's become more of a of a coach and a cheerleader almost because it's it's important to us as management of the company to make sure that our employees are prospering in in these challenging situations and make sure that everybody's okay. And that's why we've we found that uh, 
it's important to stay in communication in regular communication. What about Dal- Dalton's role with your clients? Uh, you know, with some of our clients, the, our role has diminished for a short period of time, not very many, but with most of our clients, it has become one of analyzing, uh, almost on a daily basis, what's going on in their markets and bringing them fresh thinking, uh, to help them solve the problems that they're facing today. I mean, at, at our core, we're problem solvers and we have several different tools to bring to our clients to solve communication problems. And we're just trying to be in regular communication with our clients so that we understand what's going on in real time in their situations. And, you know, by doing that, we're able to bring them fresh thinking, which which is very germane to the current situation. Now, I, I get the privilege to talk to business owners every day, and um, there's uh, I've seen a couple different schools of thought in this. Some people are saying, hey, let's lay low, conserve capital and then just kind of wait this out. And then in a month or two, we'll kind of pop our head back out and then go at it again. Um, and then the other group is saying, you know what, we want to keep some brand ubiquity out there, let people know we're still here. Maybe we're not doing exactly what we did previously, but we're doing things like uh, serving the community or figuring out ways to leverage what we do to help. Um, what are you seeing out there? I'm with the latter group. Uh, We're trying to stay very busy, and that hasn't been difficult for us since we started working from home. I know that uh, each of us have been extremely busy with client work and making sure the agency is running smoothly. Um, We wouldn't have the opportunity to step back uh, for a month or two because our clients need us. And, you know, we're very fortunate in that regard. Uh, that we are active and busy and have clients that need us. Um, we've also been involved in some business development activity during this time, which is is unusual, but we're very thankful for that. Now, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the merger with Bradford Group. Okay, so the Bradford Group is a 12-person public relations and social media and social media content group in Nashville. and. We started talking with them in late 2019, so uh, December of 2019, and it just uh, it worked out well for us. We were looking for an opportunity to build our presence in Nashville. We had done two previous mergers over the last two years or two or three years in Nashville, and this was just a perfect opportunity to uh, merge with a really great, successful uh, firm and use their talents and expertise to augment what we're current, what we were already offering our clients. Uh, and it, it was just a great opportunity to build our presence in Nashville. Now, what do you see in Nashville that's so attractive for you guys? Well, as you, as you know, Lee, Nashville, Nashville has a really solid, uh, business community. Uh, there's a lot going on in Nashville, a, a lot more than just, uh, you know, entertainment and music, uh, although that is a big part of Nashville's economy. Uh, healthcare is really large in Nashville. Technology is very large in Nashville. And we also have uh, a good amount of clients in Nashville because of our presence there. So this was an opportunity for us to build our presence there by uh, merging with the Bradford Group and beginning to work with their clients. And it just felt like a really good match for us um, and gave us an opportunity to have a much more significant presence in Nashville to grow our business there. And then do you see the adult agency continuing to grow kind of regionally like this uh, into other southern states? Uh, That's always a possibility. Uh, We've been very open-minded to mergers over the years. Uh, I think this is our sixth. And, uh, you know, if it's the right opportunity for us and we think that we can be successful in it and it provides the appropriate strategies for us to grow our business, we're, we're very open-minded to that. And then um, speaking of Nashville specifically, what is it? Um, I, I've been there recently and, and it reminded me of Atlanta maybe 10, 15 years ago. Are you seeing that kind of excitement and energy and kind of youthful exuberance around, like you were saying, technology, healthcare, and not the, maybe not the first things that you think of when you think of Nashville. 
Yeah, we do see that, Leah. That's interesting that you bring that up. Um, and, and the first sign of it is the traffic there. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a smaller, smaller Atlanta in terms of uh, traffic and people's commutes. But the growth there, and if you, if you keep track of uh, the business in Nashville, there's companies relocating their headquarters to Nashville often. And, and it seems like they're larger and larger companies. Uh, there's so much opportunity there. They have a solid um, city government and state government that supports business. And we just see a lot of opportunities there. But I think you're right. I've only lived in Atlanta for six and a half years, but it, it, Nashville reminds me a lot of what Atlanta like, was like when I moved here. Now, um, how about some consulting for the folks out there that are struggling with uh, the COVID crisis? Uh, say you're a, a like a restaurant uh, company that you have, maybe you're used to doing most of your work inside. Now you're kind of have to kind of pivot and do some of your work through delivery or some of these third party. Uh, what kind of communications should you be uh, kind of offering the public about what's going on during this time? Well, I think, first of all, you, you have to be humble in these times and, and reaching out to your customers with humility gets a lot of points right now because we're, we're all suffering in, in some way or another, whether we're business people or just as individuals. This is a hard time. But when you think about restaurants, you know, we all miss being able to go out to a restaurant. I know I know my wife and I do. But we want to support our local restaurants and the ones that we have that we have enjoyed going to and look forward to going to when this is over. So I think it's important for restaurants to make sure that their customers know that they are open for takeout. Uh, make sure that their customers know what they're offering because the offerings are quite different from when you could go in and sit at a table and order from the menu. Uh, I know for for me personally, when when I get a communication from a restaurant that we are loyal to. I want to go and help them, and uh, it's it's nice to be able to see what they what they have now, and and the easier that they can make the process for me, the better. So if I can order online or over the phone, and they bring the food to me in my car, so I don't have to get out, that makes it easy for me, and that's very satisfactory. So I think just really honest, open, and and humble communication is important with loyal customers right now. Now, uh, do you think that transfers to other businesses in terms of the relationship you have with your existing customers and um, kind of fans? Is Maybe that's where you should uh, put the emphasis of your communication to that rather than, you know, the entire market or, or uh, to strangers at this point? Or, or is this also a time to kind of make new friends? Well, I, I you know, if there's a way to... to make new friends. You, you don't ever want to turn that opportunity down. But what we're counseling our retail clients to do is go to your customer base. You, if, you're, if you're fortunate and have a good database, you already have their contact information. They're going to be more willing to look at a message from you uh, because they know you and, they, and they've been regular customers. And they're the easiest and probably the least expensive audience to reach right now if you have a uh, good database and email capabilities um, and social media also because if your customers are loyal they're probably following you on social media as well and and that's an inexpensive way to keep fresh messaging out there uh, that can change uh, every few days uh, people like to see messages from people that they enjoy being with and, and certainly going to a restaurant or, or, you know, almost any type of retail setting. If you go there regularly, you enjoy going there. So you would, you would likely enjoy seeing a message from those people. And could you share a little bit about how your, the conversations don't name specifics or, or actual, you know, kind of real life examples, but maybe the conversations you had with clients when this thing was breaking, how were you kind of, um, communicating with them and, and letting them know about how best to leverage your talents? That's a really great question. Um, we tried to be on the very front end of this and we met first internally uh, with our teams and talked almost client by client about what we could be uh, doing as counsel to our clients. So we tried to get out in front of it as much as we could. There were signs, uh, you know, in, especially in like February, that this was going to affect our, our economy in the United States. 
And we tried to get out ahead of it with our clients and tried to be very proactive in terms of bringing them uh, proactive counsel and then a clear understanding of what we can do to help them and ideas that we have. And, and we found that our clients have been very receptive to fresh thinking that is focused on the situation that we're in. Um, you know, this is new to everybody. We, yes, we've been through, uh, you know, tough economic times back in 2008, but this is completely different from that. And just, just the fact of the matter that we have to stay home and when we should stay home to, to keep the rest of us healthy, that's a, that's a new dynamic that businesses uh, across a very broad spectrum are dealing with right now. And we just tried, I guess, to get back to your question, we just tried to stay in front of that with our clients and provide good, solid, strategic counsel. So now, did you have uh, the opportunity to, like, were you saying, okay, maybe we should pause these three things or maybe reallocate some resources to this area, or is are people just going boldly forward? It depends on the client. You know, we have clients that are going boldly forward as they normally would. Uh, but we have other clients that we have counseled to uh, let's pull back in this area and keep some powder dry for when, when we get back to normal, you know, when we get back to normal and people are going out. And uh, the, the one thing that we did counsel every one of our clients on though, is to maintain some sort of presence because it costs a lot more to build uh, brand share than to maintain it. And if you lose it, it's expensive to get it back. So we tried to keep all of our clients thinking about ways to just keep a, a maintenance level, if nothing else, uh, against their brand and keeping it in front of their customers. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story today. Uh, and stay safe. And Bill, if somebody wants to learn more about the Dalton Agency, uh, what's the website? The website is daltonagency.com. Good stuff. Thank you again for sharing your story today. Thank you, Lee best to you. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by OnPay, Atlanta's new standard in payroll. To learn more and get your first month free, go to onpay.com.